This video tutorial looks at exercise five in tutorial problems number four. And in this case, we have a set of observations or counts of parasites in rats in two different treatments. One group of rats has been given the carbon tet treatment to try and kill the parasites. The other group of rats are the controls. And the observations are the numbers of adult parasites in the rats at the end of the experiment. Now the first thing to realize about this particular study is it's a case of unpaired samples. Rat number one in the control treatment is not matched up with rat number one in the carbon tet treatment in any way at all. The numbers are randomly assigned to the rats in the different treatments. So there's no way in which the observations in one treatment the control are matched up or paired with the observations in the other treatment. So it's a case of unpaired samples. Second thing to realize is that we're again testing a hypothesis about means of a sample because we want to know if the carbon tet is reducing the number of adult worms in the, in the treatment on average. Whenever we're looking at Comparing or testing hypotheses about means of one or two samples, it's a t-test of some sort. In this case, we've got two unpaired samples, so it's an unpaired t-test. First thing we need to do is to state the hypotheses. Now, the idea is that the carbon tet will kill the parasites, so we would be hoping that the control will have more parasites than the carbon tet. The alternative to that is that the carbon tet is ineffective, so the control treatment has the same number of worms as the carbon tet, or perhaps even fewer. With all t-tests, we then start by working out the summary statistics. So I punched those numbers into the calculator, and I always recommend doing the summary statistics with the calculator, statistical functions, to ensure that you don't make a trivial mistake. And I've got here the mean, the standard deviation and the variance and the number of samples. So we've got the mean for the control and the carbon tet, and they are very different, so it certainly looks as if the treatment has worked. As you know, your calculators give you the standard deviation, and you need to square that to get the variance. Finally, we've got five observations or five rats in each of the treatments. Okay, so now we need to start working out the standard error so that we can calculate the t-test statistic. Now, when we've looked at the standard error in uh, the case of a mean to hypothetical t-test or means of paired samples, we end up with only one variance. Here we've got two variances. So we can't ignore one of them. What we've got to do is come up with an average or a pooled or a combined variance. And these formulae in the statistical text tell us how to do that. The first one is working out the combined variance using the variances for the two samples and the number of observations in each sample. And because the number of observations in the samples may be different, we could have different numbers of rats in the two treatments, for instance. The formula is a little bit complicated. The same is true for the formula for the standard error once we've calculated the combined variance. So it's the square root of the combined variance multiplied by n1 plus n2 divided by n1 times n2. Then we calculate the t-test value and it's similar to the way we've calculated it in the past. Difference of two values divided by a standard error. To go and compare the calculated value to the statistical tables, we need degrees of freedom, and that is also based on the two samples, n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, to start doing these calculations, we plug the two variances we've calculated in into these places in the formula. So S1 squared is the variance for sample one, and s little two squared is the variance for sample two. So we can then do this calculation to work out the combined variance. Variance for sample one times four plus variance for sample two times four divided by n1 plus n2 take away two, so that's 
10 take away 2 or divided by 8 gives us a combined variance of 5562. We then plug that formula, or sorry, plug that value into the formula over there to give us the standard error based on the combined variance. So it's square root of 5562 by 5 plus 5 or 10 divided by 5 times 5 or divided by 25, which gives us 47.17. Finally, we can calculate the t-value, relatively simple as mean for control, take away mean for carbon tet divided by standard error, 3.64, and degrees of freedom, of course, are 8. So the last step is to compare the value we've calculated to the value in the statistical tables. Now, for a two-tailed test, it's relatively simple. We ignore the sign of our calculated t-value, so it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, and we just compare the calculated value to the value in the table. Value in the table is less than the value we've calculated. In other words, the value we've calculated is greater than the value in the table, then we reject the null. In the case of a one-tailed test, it's a bit more complicated, and we have a one-tailed test here. The rules are in the statistical manual on the bottom of page 4-3. And when the null hypothesis is, as we've got it here, mean 1 less than or equal to mean 2, we're going to reject if the calculated value is positive and greater than the table value. If the calculated value is negative, we're going to accept the null hypothesis and if the calculated value is less than the table value, we will also accept the null hypothesis. So here's the values we got, 3.64 with degrees of freedom of 8. That calculated value is positive. So that's the first part of the rule. And then if we go and find the critical value in the tables, degrees of freedom 8, and in the... 0.05 column for the one-tailed test. So the value in the table there is 1.86. The value we've calculated is positive and greater than that value, so we can reject the null hypothesis. Now there's one step I missed out here that you will see mentioned in the statistical manual, and that is comparing the variances using the F-test. Now the Unpaired t-test assumes the variances of the two samples are fairly similar. In this case, 4,500 roughly, 6,500 roughly, they're not too different. So that assumption seems reasonable. And in fact, the t-test is not greatly affected by the variances being different. If you need to check whether the two variances are or are not the same, then that can be done using the F-test that is described in the statistical manual. And the details of that calculation are in the answers for this particular tutorial problem.